All right. So today I'm going to continue with painting the blueberry leaves so that I can on Monday do some finessing with, I can use glazes, I can use opaque paints, but I can make adjustments to make the piece look more real. Um, there's my kitty. Come here. Uh, so this is basically the map I'm going to use. I'm, I'm paying attention to um, edges, uh, basic, basic hues, uh, values, but I can always adjust all of those things. So really um, also paying mostly attention to the drawing, the accuracy of the drawing. Here she is, come here. All right, honey, there you go. So I'm going to switch it to the Nikon. There we go. All right, and roll on over here to the Nikon. Try not to trip. Oh no! All right, that's what I was trying not to do. Let's see. There we go. Okay, got to start it over again now. All right, we're back. No, what the heck? Might have to start this all over. There, okay. Hopefully that stays in place. Um, sit down here, make it work. Okay, good. Making sure I'm not blocking the camera. So, I'm going to lay out my Galkid. Now, I want, I want to say a word about Galkid, because Galkid has a dryer in it, Alkid resin. It's a man-made resin, and it's actually helpful because it helps your paint dry more quickly, which is good when you want to put another layer on. But what will happen if you buy Galkid in a large container, because I know this from experience. So, you don't buy, I have to say, don't buy 16 ounces of Galkid or even eight ounces of Galkid. I usually buy the four ounce bottles of Galkid because um, it, will, it will dry before you use it up if you get the larger quantities. And so I had to decant this into a, a jar. And what happens is as the air, as it's exposed to the air, so now I've used this, and it's down to halfway and it's starting to gel. So it's getting really thick. That means it's basically starting to dry. And that's what will happen in your 16 ounce container um, about halfway through or even before that. So I always get the small containers. I get several small containers and then it doesn't go to gel on me. I can still use this, but I'm starting to be on the verge of not being able to use it. Yeah, it's getting really stringy um, and gel-like. Also, it will dry really quickly now. So it'll dry within an hour or two rather than giving me half a day or a day. So I've already ordered some new Galkid. Um, it's on order. Hopefully it will come more come quickly. You know, if I have to, I'll get it from Amazon. So another note about, let's see this tiny little brush, I have my teeny tiny brush. And this one, I might have to go get a better brush. Let's see, is it better? Not very much, it's not much better than that. So what will happen to the brushes is that they get used, they, they start to splay. You can kind of see that the bristles are splayed out, but they're also limp. So they don't have any spring left. And when they don't have any spring left, well, they're not useful anymore. Let me see if I have a better one here. I have, I buy these in bunches. This one's a little bit better. It's a little better. I buy these in bunches because they just don't last. And it's partly, maybe it's how I treat them, but it's also um, the nature of them, their nature. They're fragile and I probably use them too much for 
more than they're intended to be used for. Um, but also they, they just have a limited life. So I'm going over to my jar over here. I'm going to grab a fresh one. And these are actually, I'm going to say next time I buy, these are all double aughts. That's a little bit too small. Double odd is a little bit too small. And then they really don't last. I'm walking around my studio now because I'm getting, grabbing some more brushes. So there's, obviously they go down to one, then there's odd, which is zero, and then there's double odd, and then there's also triple odd. I don't know if you can see these very well. Um, this one is a double odd, and this is a one. So you might be able to see a little bit of the difference. I'm gonna say that the one is more useful because you can get just as much detail with the one, but it's not quite as fragile. The double odd is more fragile. So that's my little tutorial today about brushes. Oh, the other thing is that if you drop these, which I do on occasion, they topple off my, my platform here or something. And they inevitably, I mean, it just seems to always happen that they, they land on their bristles, right? That really wrecks them because that will, that breaks the bristles at the base and then they get really limp really quickly. So I'm gonna say, try to avoid dropping them and you know, letting them land on their bristles because that, that will really do them in. All right, let's see. I'm gonna use these new ones. They have a little more spring. And I'm going to tackle this part of the leaves here. I tried to reattach this leaf, but um, it broke apart on me, so I wasn't able to do it. So I want to do some more of these details. Um, you know, my, my setup has shifted a little bit, um, and I just have to sort of roll with it. I don't, I would normally get up and I would fuss with the setup to make it more close to what I had on Monday, but I don't really want to do that right now. And so I'm going to move on here um, and start painting. So once again, I have some small little um, mongoose brushes. These are flats. And if you can see this, this started out as a flat, it had squared off edges and you can start to see that it's already starting to wear on the corners from what I'm, how I'm painting with it. This one also, this is a bigger flat. This is a number eight. And you know, you're gonna find sizing to not be that consistent between brands. So, but this is already starting to wear on the corners here. It's not quite as square as it was. That's just typical. It's just typical wear. Um, and you'll eventually wear your flats into being filberts, and that's just sort of natural. Um, all right, let's see. Start to mix. And I know you don't have, we don't have a camera on my, um, on my palette today. So, so I'd like to finesse this little twig here and then start with this leaf and move on out here. Um, and I don't know if I'll fake that or not. Maybe I won't, maybe I'll just paint that out. Um, you know, I think that I would, uh, I would have, uh, either faked this or taped another leaf on to get that, but, um, you know, I'll probably just paint it out today. All right. So this leaf, this comes toward me in space. And the thing that's going to communicate that, um, is the shape of the leaf, the drawing, the foreshortening is in the shape. And also details like um, the edge, the edges, which I've been paying attention to here also, right? I've been paying attention to edges here and edges here. So edges are important, shapes are important, and also the uh, variety of shapes. We want to ex accentuate variety too. So I'm going to have to mix some color, and I know you guys can't, you can't see what I'm mixing. Um, like before, I'm starting with an opaque using some titanium white just to give me an opaque color that's not too dark. 
And I'm making a mixture of cadmium red and alizarin crimson. And on one side of my pile of paint, I've got it more cadmium red. And on the other side, I've got it more alizarin, which is more of a purpley color, right? It's more bluish. And then I can mix some purples from that. Uh, I can add some ultramarine to make a violet, kind of a dirty violet, which I see out here in my setup. And I can add to that some burnt umber, makes more of a rusty color. And there might be times when I'm gonna use some cadmium orange. So now I'm looking back at my setup and I also want, I want a dark. So I'm gonna mix up a separate pile of a dark, which is using my dark paint. So I've got burnt umber, I've got ultramarine blue, which are sort of the heavy hitters. And then the darks that I see out here are more, um, they're redder. So I'm gonna add alizarin and alizarin is pretty overpowering. So I have to be a little judicious with adding my alizarin. And then if I want to, I can add a little bit of the complement, which is um, Meridian. But I'm putting that over kind of on the other end so that I can control my use of it. Right. Washing out my brush here. And of course I have the bad habit of mixing with my brush. So, okay, so I'm going to be adjusting my drawing because things have shifted. I want to bring this tip out toward me a little bit more. And then the tip actually folds up on this leaf. It's actually rolling up and this one is rolling up a little bit too. And then there's a cast shadow right here from this leaf. It's casting a shadow. And this edge of the leaf, as it is basically rolling up and back, is light against this dark. And one thing I'm going to do on Monday is I want to accentuate, I want to use glazes and opaque paint to adjust the values so that they are more punchy. But before I do that and do anything, I'm taking some of my Dow kit because you see how this has sunk in. You can see the difference there. So I'm going to take my Dow kit and I'm going to, with a little bit of um, odorless mineral spirits, and I'm going to bring up the true values of what I painted the other day. so that I can make judgments more accurately. All right. All right. Now I wanted to do this little twig right here and that's just going to take me mixing up some of the background color. And so I need to have a pile of background color. So I'm using ultramarine blue as a base, but I need to lighten it. So I'm adding some titanium white and some burnt umber. And actually in this, I got a little bit of alizarin in here. So I'm going to have to adjust that. But actually this has a little alizarin in it also as I see, looking at it. So this is darker than what I have up here, let's see. Considerably darker. And that's something that I want to reserve for later. So I'm gonna add a little bit more white to this mixture to make it opaque and also match what I have in the background. So, more or over here. So I'm going to come in and just adjust my drawing a little bit here and here. Still a little darker, but we'll be dealing more with this later. Here. to 
just feathering this out. Now, this is something that we're going to be doing later. I'm going to be punching up these values, but I just sort of inadvertently got a darker value and I'm not going to sweat it. So if I bring this over here, you can see it's just a little bit darker in value and it already increases the, the, uh, the punch. But we're going to be doing more of that on Monday. All right. So by bringing this in here, it gives me something to create that light against the darker value. I'm just going to feather that out so that I don't have trouble with it later when I want to do a background. So I'm going to make this a little bit more consistent here. checking my, yeah, it's hard. I'm looking at my, oh, I guess you can see that. That's good. All right, good. I'm looking at my screen. I had to turn around and look at my screen there. So I have this brush and it has some reds on it here and I'm going to use it to adjust um, the shape of this leaf a little bit more close to what I'm seeing today. And that's too light, too light and chalky. Um, so I'm stopping for a second and going, okay, I need to remix. I need to mix some other variations. I need to darken this mixture I'm using some alizarin. So one of the issues with darker colors, um, such as alizarin and uh, ultramarine blue, is that they are transparent because they're actually dyes adding some burnt umber to this. Um, they're actually dyes. And so um, if you're using them in their pure darkest form, they're transparent. And so you will have a hard time covering, covering something that's underneath. So what I tend to do is I tend to, well, I have to layer it. So I can either um, use several layers of, say, pure ultramarine blue or pure alizarin. Um, that will be several coats after they've dried in between. Or I can put down, add some white that will add opacity, like we have back here, and it will cover better. And then I can come back and glaze over it or just put a second coat down. It's also an option. So what have I done? I've added, I'm talking, I'm losing track of things. I added some uh, cadmium thread, forgetting the names of my paints. So coming over here, this edge of this leaf curls upward. And you know, we have to pay attention to the edges. So we have the shapes. And we have the edges, which tell us about what's happening. So understanding, being able to draw the shape in foreshortening and also pay attention to the edges um, is going to help tell our viewer what's happening with this leaf. So I need a little bit darker. It needs to be darker. I'm adding some ultramarine blue. That's too dark, so I went a little too far. Adding some of my lighter mixture to this to make it a little more chalky. Sometimes it takes several passes here. So you can see that I kind of feel my way. I sort of feel my way to the color that I, that I see in the setup. And now I'm going to Let's see, do some drawing, switching brushes here. And you can see the underside of this leaf as the leaf curls up. And you know, 
Um, you don't have to be, you want to be accurate where it matters. And that's a matter of experience learning what works and what does not work in a matter of experience and when you need to be accurate and when you don't need to be accurate. And then I need this top edge here. It's kind of a yellowy white, lighter and more yellow. And I'm using my flat here but my flats are not as razor sharp as they were. See, that's a little too hard. So now I have to alter it. All right, so it's too white. I'm going to you know, soften it. Still too light. Soften it some more. And now I'm gonna come around it to adjust the shape of my stroke closer to what I see. That's still too light. That's a little bit better and I can, I can adjust also the dark edge, the dark side of the edge with my background color. A little bit like this. And then there's a, see, hang on, adjust this a little bit more. I'm gonna bring this down. And you can see that I'm mixing a little bit. I have to load my brush more. There we go. And then there's the shape of this is, there's a um, cast shadow here but it's more of a red than the background. It's actually darker than the background. Like, no, that's not true. It's not darker than the background. There. So a little cast shadow there. And I'm going to come underneath here and flatten this. You know, I have a choice. I can either make this edge turn up or I can bring it into a point um, which will be easier for the viewer to understand. So I think that that's what I'm going to do. Making an executive decision to bring this to a point here. So now what I, I have um, taken my large brush and I put in the broader, the broader, hues, the broader shapes within this. And there's one more thing I want to see if I can do. I've got some of this dark from over here on my brush. I'm not sure I take, I can see the vein down the middle of the leaf. I wonder if I can put in an indication of that vein. Sometimes it's not necessary. Sometimes it's too picky to do something like that. So now I want to take my skinny little brush and pay attention to my edges. So like I did here and I did here, I want to have some edges be sharp. And so my nice new brush Maybe I'll try to be kinder to this one and see how long it lasts. So this edge is a hard edge. It's a dark against the light. So you can see that I can come in and make an edge, but I, it's harder for me to blend, blend this out, but I can do it here. So I can take, it's a little bit fussy, right? Compared to my uh, little flats that I was using. So now I'm looking at this edge and going, well, it's maybe a little too stark. So I want to soften some parts of it. Soften that. 
soften this. So we just have one part of it that's, that's harder. And there's a little bit of light up against this vein. I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm blocking the light when I do that. Um, we come in here. Just do that. I can sharpen this if I want to. I'm kind of looking going, do I want to sharpen that or do I not? And this edge is sharp against the dark. So I'm going to take my flat brush and pick up some of the background color and come back over here because this is a little bit darker. A little darker, it's going to help me pick out that edge. So, as you recall, hard edges come toward us and soft edges recede. So, I want to bring uh, the edge harder as it comes forward. So, I'm picking up some of my lighter tones of red. And I'm kind of making this up here because the actual leaf curls upward. So I'm going to come in with a little bit lighter there so that it comes forward and toward me. But see how I didn't sharpen that up. And even though what I see is harder edged here, I don't really want to sharpen that up either because it's going to then come forward. And I don't really want that. This. I'm not sure about, I think this is a little too stark. I'm gonna soften that. And then I can see the shape underneath. I'm going to pay a little attention to the underneath of that leaf here. Let's see, picking up a dark and I've got my little tiny flat. And then underneath here, when I, when I shift over and I can see what's happening underneath, there's a cast shadow. So this is all kind of a similar tone, probably a little darker on that leaf underside here. So now I'm gonna move on to this stem and the stem is really bright red. So I'm going to take my little flat and some background color and just sharpen this up. Now I feel as though my large flats are maybe too, too much of a blunt instrument. And then this comes all the way up here. I've got some of my old background color showing through right there. So you can see with these leaves, I'm really trying to pay attention to shape and edge. And I'm, I'm paying a little attention to this shape here, this on this leaf. And things have shifted, so I'm gonna bring it over a little bit more. I also wasn't that accurate when I laid those in. So I'm doing a little bit more drawing now. making my shapes a little bit more accurate. And you can see this color is a little darker and that's kind of intentional. I want a little bit more contrast than what I had. See how dark this is compared to this. Well, I'm going to be adjusting all of that later on. Let's see, I'm gonna just light. There. So this, 
I always keep wanting to put my arm up there, but I'm blocking the light when I do. So and now I'm blocking your view, but you know, I can't seem to win here. Maybe um, at some point in the future, if I keep doing some Zoom classes, I'll get a more sophisticated light si situation so that I don't have just one light source from the top. Let's see. And I'm going to just paint out this little thing here. And you can see that it would be better if I use my larger flat to do that because I, I can't really carry enough paint in this tiny little flat brush. So if you want to cover any ground, uh, you need to use a larger brush that can carry more paint. So I'm whipping out my bigger flat. And now I can be more effective. But you can see even when I've added white to this mixture, there's a certain amount of transparency there. So I want to, maybe I want to load my brush more like that and just lay that paint down just on top. But you can see there's still transparency there. I'm gonna to have to, I'm gonna to have to paint over it again. Sort of feather this out. I don't really want to have a hard edge out here because it's just going to make it harder for me when I when I paint the background if I have a hard edge. All right, so this this leaf right here is curling over toward us. So I'm using my larger flat and I'm grabbing some dark, my dark red, and I'm going to have to mix up more because true to my nature, I did not mix up enough paint. This is one another one of my bad habits. So this leaf bends over toward us and it casts a shadow. here and this part of the leaf is sort of a pale underside and it is lighter in color than the top side and then also this leaf right here is casting a shadow onto here and then I can also see the seam see the vein that goes down the middle of the leaf I'm going to just sort of sketch that in here but it's covered by this cast shadow. And the cast shadow is not exactly the same color as this, this deep shadow underneath here. It's a little bit more yellow. Let's see. Bringing in a little bit of cadmium orange. So a lot of times I will paint what I see, which is which is what we need to do, but then I'll, if something's not working, I'll, I might make a change in order to make it make more sense to the viewer. So like I would possibly, like I can see this cast shadow from this leaf, but if it didn't make sense to the viewer as I'm painting it, and I go, you know, that doesn't really make sense to me visually, then I'll paint it out. And I think that I could probably get away with that, um, with doing that. All right, I'm rinsing out my brush here and I wanna put in some of these lighter tones. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use my smaller flat. Another one here. So in here we have where the light is hitting and then this is quite light, like that. So I'm going to, let's see, looking at it using some white to get that light value, but it still is a pink like this. This is actually uh, a little bit more orangey than I, than I made it. Let's see. So I'm mixing on a white palette and you have to keep in mind 
that when you're mixing on a white palette, things, everything that you do on it looks dark because it's in contrast to your light, your white of the palette. And so when you mix, that looks so white. It doesn't look super white on my palette, but see how white it looks on my painting. So I need to make an adjustment. So that's why some people use a 50% gray palette or even the wood palettes that you've seen because they have a value. And everything that you do is going to affect your perception. Um, every, every palette surface, whether it's 50% gray or whether it's wood color, is going to affect your perception. Some one way or the other, I guess the idea is for people, um, they're using a wood palette or a 50% gray palette, that it's closer to the values that they're working with here. And that makes it easier for them to make judgments. So it's always all about making judgment. So you can see that I've added something to neutralize. I've got kind of a purple here that I'm adding so that it's not so bright and white and closer to this. So now I'm going to pay attention to some of the drawing again and adjust my drawing so that I feel like it makes more sense. We have a tip of the leaf here. Adjusting the shape. And you can see how I picked out the edge here. And I will probably be doing that here also, because that is one of the ways that I can show what, what this is, what's going on here. Because it is a part of the leaf that's folding over. So I'm darkening like I did here. I'm pushing this back by Finding some friggin' paint here. Come on. That's darker here, there. And then I'm going to keep this edge somewhat soft, even though I might clean it up some by picking up some background color here. So even though what I'm seeing is pretty pretty hard edged looking at my setup. I, if I, I feel that if I make this edge super hard edge, it's just going to look like a cutout. And that's not what I want. So I'm making a decision to make that edge soft and the forward edge here sharper and then and use my, my tools. These are tools of mine to show the viewer what is coming forward and what is going back and explain a little bit more the shape, what I know, a little bit of what I know as opposed to what I'm seeing. So I can come in here and punch up this forward edge. Now I'm going to take my little tiny flat, starting to get worn. I can see that it's starting to take a beating. They don't last very long. And I want to put in some of the lights here. So let's see, I need to get some more red. So what I'm seeing is that up against the cast shadow, up against the edge of the cast shadow, it's redder here. and even a little bit here. And the cast shadow is obviously dictated by the shape that's casting the shadow, which is this edge of the leaf. But it's also dictated by the surface that it's falling on. So the curve that you see 
and this cast shadow was dictated by those two things. All right, there. And now I want a lighter color for this. And this edge right here is very sharp. So I'm probably gonna to have to use my teeny little brush. And I'm probably gonna to have to come outside of here and finesse this background color. So I'm using a light to make this outside edge here. And then I'm gonna grab some light that has some more yellow in it. Let's see how this will do. Oh, whoops. So when you're, if your brush starts to get too gunky around the ferrule, which is this metal thing, wipe it off, which is what I just did. I had too much gunk. So that's too light. I'm going to adjust. Just enough. So when I adjust, I basically am always battling the paint that I've already put down. I have to overcome it. So there I've added some cadmium red and some cadmium orange. And then it's a little brighter over here also around this cast shadow. And then the edge of this, leaf is obscured by this stem that's coming in front. So I'm going to reinforce this stem. It's right right here. Let's see. I think I need a little bit more cadmium orange. Let me see how this works. So the stem comes along here and it obscures this edge of And I can see this vein as it comes down in the cast shadow. And I can also punch up this, the outer edge of this leaf a little more sharply. So I come in with my little brush, my little round brush. Let's see if I can punch that up. I want it to be maybe not such a wide wide area of light. I want it to look like an edge and not like a great big curling thing, curling edge. So I'm, kind of, I'm bringing some darker red and manipulating this a little bit. So there so that it's an edge. And then I want to come in with some background color. And I'm to the point where I'm gonna to have to mix up more background color because I didn't mix up enough. And I'm trying to extend my background color. So I'm adding some galkid to it to extend it. I can only get so much out of this. So I can come up against that edge and pop it, whoops. There, and then blend out. come down here and kind of explain this. There, a little hard edge right up there. And then I'll need to extend this, this uh, branch out, but I'm gonna move on to these leaves here. So here, I've got, still got this dark color on my brush going to come and ex accentuate this little hair. Accentuate this little bit and still adding some more galkid to extend my my dark color here. Kind of pop this edge out. So you can see how dark this is. We're going to be coming in over here and putting in darks like that 
on Monday. Let's see. Okay, so this leaf right here, I'm pointing to all of them, I can see that. This leaf right here, it basically has the light hitting the top of it and then it curls down. So I'm going to put a cooler color violet here, maybe like this one. See if I can make my paint last long enough. So kind of a cooler violet here where the light is hitting. And then it bends down here and then it's quite there. And then there's a cast shadow from this leaf is casting a shadow on that lower half. So I need a darker red. See, and I don't really have, you know, I'm running out of paint on my palette, which is my own fault. It happens to me. And then I have to remix colors. And, you know, the, up, the upside of that is that you get good at mixing. You know, the downside is that it takes you time to mix colors. So let's see. Got kind of a darker, let's see if it's dark enough. Maybe it's too red. I'm adding some alizarin, I mean, um, ultramarine to it to make it cooler. And even though this is darker than, this is a shadow, so it's, it's darker, it's not darker than my background. So I have to pay attention to that and decide how am I going to differentiate? And so um, I'm just gonna pick up some more background color from my meager pile that is diminishing here. And really this is getting to be more like a glaze because I'm extending the paint using the Galkid and it makes it to, into more of a glaze. So I'm probably just gonna have to, I just have to bite the bullet and mix up some more color with my ultramarine, um, burnt umber, a little bit of white. It's too light, it needs to get darker. A little bit of alizarin. Let's see, it might be too brown. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's not quite dark enough to match the rest of this. I'm gonna add some more ultramarine blue to it. So then I can say to my viewer, this is darker than that. And if you squint, they're very close, kind of squinting at it. But anyway, I'm not going to um, belabor this too much more. Now I'm going to pay attention to the edges of my cast shadow, which I've made kind of hard edge, but it really is not. So the other thing about cast shadows is that the closer they are to the to the object that's casting them, the harder the edges are. And so, you know, this edge is somewhat defined here. This edge is less defined than that one. When I'm looking at the, the setup, this edge is farther from this. And so it's actually much softer. These edges are much softer. So I'm going to soften them. And I've also added some, a little bit of white to make this lighter and, and it's also making it cooler. Here. Which is okay with me. That it's cooler. So I get down here and I see that the, ed, the uh, end of the leaf, which is pointed, is just picking up a little bit of reflection. And so it's just a little bit lighter. And I can decide later to make this sharper or not. All right, so now up here we have this lighter area where the, where the light is hitting. And this, actually I came in too far here, so this kind of over. Yeah. Right here. So I'm looking at my leaf and thinking, okay, what are my soft edges and what are my hard edges? And this leaf has, a lot of soft edges because it's um, it's in some shadow, but because it's because it's bending downwards, it's in shadow because it has a cast shadow on it. So I'm going to darken 
this plane of the leaf here, I really want a bigger friggin' brush to do this, got it? Okay. And I'm running out of paint. So mixing up some more paint, looking at my setup to see how dark do I need this? What do I need to add to it? Let's see if this is might be too uh, let's see here. So this leaf bends down and down this way. And then there are some parts where there's, where it's darker here. Come on. Just a little bit more darker right here and darker here and darker on this edge. And then I can see a little bit of the vein running down the middle, just a slight bit. So I'm going to just, whoops, uh-oh, dropped a brush. Just right there, uh-oh. And then I can look at the sharp edges edges that are sharp versus edges that are not. And right now it's really up here, this edge and that edge. So I can just take a moment, pop out the light edge here. And maybe the light edge over here. Now you can see, as I've said before, it's a line at first, then I have to modify it. I either pay attention to where that hard edge ends. So over here, I need uh, a cat hair on the, on the brush that I dropped. Here's another one. Okay, I need a dark on this side in order to make that pop out. And again, I want to come in and pay attention to where this hard edge ends, where I stop seeing this hard edge. There. So I see that, I see that, I don't see this. I do see this hard edge of this, of this leaf that's overlapping. But the rest of this is really, let's see, I'm gonna try defining this just a little bit here. That. So this is something that I'm going to do more on Monday. See, I've taken something that's much darker and I've, I've just defined that edge. And then also I can see here Okay, now I need to paint this leaf. Then I'll be done for now. So this is giving you a taste of where I'm gonna go with all of this on Monday, the darks. So I wanna come in with this dark on my brush and draw this, this negative space in here because it's a little bit dark. Now, the drape that's behind this has wrinkles in it. And so, you know, large swoopy wrinkles. And so some, some things have more punchy darks behind them than others. So that affects to some degree what I'm emphasizing and not. But I'm also, I'm also thinking about what I want to come forward and what I don't want to come forward. So now I can see this leaf. It's basically mostly in shadow. And so I'm going to pick up and or mix. I might have to do both. I might have to mix. 
a dark here, a dark red that's darker than that. So I need some alizarin. Let's see, that might be, oh, I'll have a look at this. Mostly a alizarin white here, but it looks pretty good. Comes up here. So you can also possibly see that it's a little bit transparent. So, so you can see as I spread it, it becomes more translucent. So I'm going to get some ultramarine blue and some burnt umber. Now burnt umber adds a bit of yellow. It's obviously a brown, so it adds a little bit of a yellow to this. But it also adds some opacity because it's an earth color, so it's opaque. So I'm playing around with some of the variations that I see. And of course, this dark that I'm putting in is related to the vein that goes down in the middle of this vein. And so I want to pay attention. I kind of got it too far to the left, and I'm going to have to bring it back over when I paint the other side of the leaf. So let's see. And now over on this side, it's cooler. So I'm going to, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do. I'm going to add some white to my mixture. It will cool it and also lighten it slightly. So I'm going to come over here. I actually lighten it a lot, but let's see. I'm going to bring that vein back over to the right. So now I need to I'm going to darken this a little bit down here. There. And then the end of the leaf is just a little bit lighter. It just picks up a little bit of light. And now I want to come over and define this outside edge like I did over here. So a lot of times I start out and I, and I, um, I'm trying to figure things out like over here. And then as I gain confidence with what I'm doing, I'll start to be perhaps more effective and do a little bit more like I did here, like on this dark and stuff. Kind of feeling out what I'm going to do next time I come in. So I'm going to take my larger flat for the moment. But I'm going to have to come in probably with the tiny little um, sable. But for the moment, I want to pick up some more paint. And sort of carve this out. And I might just leave it. I'm just kind of sitting here looking at it thinking, hmm, what do I want to do? Because, well, I'm thinking, how far forward do I want this leaf to come? So ultimately, when I'm painting the, uh, when I come in and start popping the darks over here, that's the question I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask myself, what do I want to highlight? What do I want to come forward for the viewer? And what do I want to recede? So I'll have to decide that about this. And of course, I can put in these dark accents and then I can take them out later. So there's no harm done by doing it. There's not any problem there. Um, the only problem is time. So if you want to be really efficient, then you would make the right decision every time. And I can tell you that that, you know, it's nice to be that efficient, but um, I find that when I'm really searching and I have to, and I'm trying out, I'm trying to see what I want to do, when I'm trying to see how things work, uh oh, um, there. Um, then 
then I'm going to chase down all these questions. I just want to darken, soften this just slightly. I'm going to chase down all these questions. Um, so I'm going to try something to see if it works. And then if it doesn't, then I change it. So now I'm coming in and I'm, I'm giving a little bit of definition to this. It's just not as punched out as the edge on the front. So I'm, I'm starting to refine, but I really want to do this on Monday and not now. So I'm saying, let's not get dragged into this. Yeah. All right, so on Monday, I'm going to come in and start playing around with more with these kinds of decisions um, and popping the color a little bit more. So you can see that I, I, I popped the color more over here than I did over here. And I'd like to do some more of this over here. As I gained confidence, I used more color. <laughs> All right, so um, see you Monday. I'll post this on my, on the uh, YouTube and you guys can watch it. Oh crap, did it? Oh, so you, lost, so you didn't see all of that. You didn't see that? I can't believe it. Oh crap, Ola. So my camera shifted, plus you've got glare on that. You can't, can't see it anyway. All right, well, I'm just using my hand to shift the glare. So I'm not sure, I'm gonna to have to watch this. I'm not sure how useful this has been. Not sure how useful this has been.